Welcome back, you lovely bunch. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome to your old subs. Welcome to your new subs. And if you're not subbed, click sub. I'm trying to speak a bit slower today so everybody can understand me because we're going to address a really interesting subject. Gears. How many gears do you need? Quite a few years ago, back in the day, bikes used to have loads of gears and it was almost like the more gears you had, the better your bike was. Or was it just me? I mean, that's what it was when I was growing up as a kid. And this is when like triple chain rings were like the thing, you know? But times are changing. So in mountain biking, they've been using one bike for quite a while. And, and it seems obvious that the gravel biking would follow this suit, you know? Of course, that's really hard to say. Why you want to run a one by? Why you want to run a one by? By one by, I mean you have one single chain ring at the front and a wide range cassette at the rear. So 11 speed was the common thing for this. Um, I think it's Shimano that only do an 11 speed now. Like, so Campag have released their 12 speed and Tram have been doing the 12 speed for a while now. But I mean, that extra gear, honestly, I don't think it really makes a huge amount of difference. Not, not at like our level, guys. <laughs> so what am I running? Why do I run it? Why should you run a one by? I mean, if you haven't got a one by already, don't feel you need to go and buy a one by group set. But if you wanted to switch to one bike, I'm going to run through a quick, easy way that you can do that. So we're going to have a bit of a ride around, a chat about gears and, and why I run one bike and why I'd never run a two bike on a gravel bike. It was a gorgeous day when I left the house and as soon as I stepped outside, got the camera out, the rain starts. But still, look, it's quite nice. I really wanted to do this out to Zwift on rollers, but for some reason, my power meter will not sync to Zwift. So I was having to use like estimated power, which is like quite far off, but that's a video in itself. Anyway. Let's go. I'm getting cold and wet, and um, and I'll tell you about one by all about one by. How exciting! Come on, let's go. Someone, I can't remember who it was, but thank you very much. You um, told me how to get the turn by turn on my Brighton. And it seems to be working. <laughs> Probably not gonna stick to the route, but thank you so much because it really does work and I get a little arrow, so I'm really happy. I love a bit of hail. <laughs> Well, that was fun. It went from sunny to absolutely freezing and hailstones. <laughs> Yay! I just wanted to come for a ride and chat about gears. Didn't want to get like hailed on. Oh, tunnel. Ooh. It's, it's no fun trying to do vlogs when it's raining. It's really hard to film, funnily enough. Right, one by. One by, one by, one by. I went all like high pitch then. Right, so I would honestly only run one by on my gravel bike. The reason for this being is, like with one by, the only downside is the large jumps between gears. I mean, honestly, that's all I can see as, as a bad point. So if you're racing, having that real close gear ratio when you're pinning it, it makes it easier. So you're not suddenly like jolting like, like that between gears, you know? Um, and that's essentially like, what one by does give you because in order to get from a nine tooth up to a 46 like i'm running there's going to be some jump but realistically you don't really notice like it could be smoother yeah but like i'm not gearing up like for a sprint or a lead out or attacking on a climb so it's very different that's why i'd always run a two by on a road bike i want that close gear range i don't want to be like jolting or having a big jump between gears when i'm racing i just don't and one by doesn't give you that and you'll see like in the, in the World Tour, there was, what, one team, was it Aqua Blue? And he used that 3T, is it 3T bike? Anyway, like the one by one. And, and no one liked it, funnily enough, because it's just a pain. You don't want to be changing your chain ring for all these climbs. You don't want to be having to change your rear cassette. Like with a gravel bike, you bosh your chain ring on, you bosh your cassette on, and you're done. That's it. You might change your chain ring, actually, if you're like doing something like particularly hilly. But I've got a 40 on the front and a 9 to 46 on the rear which is fine for climbs it's fine for downhill it's fine for everything with SRAM you can do the mullet so you end up with like an eagle cassette so that'll give you a 10 to a 52 or a 54 something huge but the downside to running that SRAM eagle mullet is the bigger you go on the rear cassette the bigger the jumps are going to be between the gears I mean it's inevitable so that is the downside I mean it is a really good setup 
but that is the downside. You end up with like huge jumps between gears. I was gonna like do a point, some riding, then a point, then some riding, but like I'm feeling all chatty, so, so you just gonna have to listen to me. <laughs> so another good thing about gravel group sets is the rear mech often has a clutch in them, which means that when you're going over bumpy terrain and all these rocky red descents, what a clutch does is it makes it means that your rear derailleur doesn't move as much and it stops the chain bouncing off really really good for gravel like awesome don't really need it in road as much because well there, there's no gravel or rocks you know but this has all come from mountain biking you know and then also the narrow wide chain rings that's where some of the teeth one of the teeth is wide and then one's thin i'll try and show you now actually let's have a look let me show you you probably can't see that at all but you can google it <laughs> so basically one tooth narrow one's wide and that keeps the chain like really firmly in place and it just makes it a lot easier when you're like pinning it about and you don't end up dropping a train all the time so the combination of the narrow wide chain ring and the clutch in the rear mech your chain shouldn't really drop off really at all ever i never turn my clutch on so on shimano you can turn your clutch on and off on tram it's like built in but on my shimano i literally never turn it on because I just don't need it. I think I've dropped my chain once and that's never having my clutch on. I mean, that's the thing, a well-designed drivetrain and like rocky ground, it's just gonna be fine. You're not gonna be dropping your chain all the time. And that, I suppose, brings me nicely onto my next point, converting to one by. Do you need like something special? Do you need to buy loads of stuff? Can you do it with your current setup? Well, essentially like, yeah, like I've done it before my cycle cross bike. I took it from a two by and just set it up as a one by. I had a, 36 up the front and I had a 11 36 at the rear so that gave me a 36 36 you know which was quite nice I mean that was all right for racing but for gravel you need something a bit wider my advice if you want to convert like pretty much next to nothing you can just do it with your current setup you know you can literally if you're running a double chain ring ditch one chain ring and uh run that with your rear cassette you know you might have to put a bigger cassette on but a lot of rear mechs will only reach up to a 36 so you're not going to have to like a great gear range that's going to be the downside but essentially it's free and you're just using what you've got i'd look at getting a narrow wide chain ring though i mean depending on your like bcd on your crank like how how spaced out your bolts are <laughs> like that that depends on the size chain ring you can run but essentially you can run it pretty cheap and you can run like an old 105 rear mech for example and just use like an extender so you get a little thing that screws into your rear mech and your rear mech hanger and it makes everything a bit longer so you can um so you can still run like a wider range cassette i mean honestly does this make any sense at all hopefully it does a bit waffly isn't it this is days way of explaining stuff but essentially but essentially it's like i'm going to say something smart i think if you're going to get a gravel bike or if you want to set up your bike as a gravel bike you have to go one by it's just so much better right now i can't really feel my fingers they're so cold i'm not riding fast enough that's the thing seagulls are so loud mate so loud yeah not like loads of scenery today is there what i'd rather look at right beautiful scenery or me definitely me right <laughs> someone designed a route for me on commute so thank you and i am going to do it and I've got my route by route navigation working, so that's awesome. I was also going to do a vlog about using rollers on a turbo or a bike without a power meter and how accurate the estimated power of Zwift really is. Let me know what you guys think. One by, two by, which camp are you in? I mean, I am definitely, definitely one by for gravel bike. I can't see why you wouldn't use it. Do you think it's a gimmick? A lot of people think everything's a gimmick. See, the current one that people seem to be commenting is that bike computers are a gimmick. Well, not everyone. Just you get the odd one that thinks a phone works. I might test that out as well, but I don't think it is a gimmick. I think it's really handy. It's really efficient. I mean, I'm riding up this hill now. It is 12% and I'm chatting to you because my gear range is nice. And that's a good thing about one by. I mean, two bar will give you that too. <laughs> I mean, two bar gives you a really big gear range as well. It just gives you like closer gears. So you don't have those jumps. I think that's kind of pretty much it, right? Am I missing something? There's not a huge difference, is there really? Look on my gravel bike now, I've got 11 speed. And if I switched to the Shimano like two by, I'd have 22 gears, but I wouldn't have that heavier gearing and I wouldn't have that lighter gearing. So. I mean, to me, it's just not really worth it. So a really, really interesting subject today, hey? Gears, one by, two by. Like, in short, I'd use two by on a road bike because the close gears are really nice for racing and you can really fine tune which gear you're in. Whereas on a gravel bike, you don't really need that. You just need to like be able to smash up a hill or smash down a hill or smash along some gravel. And a one by gives you that. You also get the clutch, which keeps the rear derailleur 
lock in place and it means that your chain doesn't drop off. You have narrow wide chain rings, they keep your chain in place. So essentially, they're just really good. I mean, is there anything I'm missing? Is there anything that you would add? And your comments are really helpful because of you, I have a rad route to do and I have turn by turn navigation that now works. So thank you, one by two by. Which do you prefer? I'll see you all soon, bye.